Good hello. I am really excited about this week's Sunday case study because we have such great clarity in the Dalai Lama's palms. Normally, my images for these Sunday case studies are really blurry, and with less quality, I can provide less clarity. So it goes without saying, the more detail I have in my images, the more uh, detail I can provide. And already here, you know, just look at we've got here the stark, profound, strong, meaningful Good Samaritan lines, the signs of the healing stigmata. We've got these powerful uh, success lines, you know, rising up more, you know, several success lines here rising up from high up on Luna. This is significant and profound. And just look at the way that the fate line cuts the, the palm in two. It comes up in this sort of vertical carving, deep engraved vertical line here. And we've got some had some difficulties, particularly after the age of 35 and uh, 53 here on the fate line. This is significant, and I want to unpack what these things mean. But first of all, I want to get into the shape of the hands and the fingers. Uh, there's a great sense here that this person gets a, a, a great feeling uh, through um, uh, helping others seek joy. Sensual hands are very sort of rounded, you know, um, conic, sort of pudgy. Uh, thick basal phalanges, and 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 really, there's a sense of someone who is, you know, desires these uh, intense feelings of uh, joy and enlightenment. You know, sensual hands either fall, uh, you know, into a complete sort of debauchery, or they rise to um, you know, the highest possibilities of joy and happiness. And there's a great sense of here of uh, someone who's willing uh, th th that's their life sort of purpose but let's be clear this is a, a very complex mix of uh, practical analytical and some sensual elements here as well in terms of classification so it's really important to look at the key features uh, that stand out in the palms and identify what these things mean to so take note of every sort of uh, standout factor and, and and sort of cross-reference this afterwards. Now notice how the tips of each of the fingers are almost sort of um, well-developed in themselves. They're almost, I don't want to say bulbous, but they're kind of sort of teardrop shape. They're, they're strong, they're well-developed. They're in the, they, they show someone who is um, really in need of a spirit, high spiritual purpose. You know, anyone with these kinds of fingertips is in constant searching for knowledge. Um, they are almost always highly spiritual, very open-minded. Um, that's also seen by the, the length in between the head and the heart line. And we don't see that throughout this person's life. But as this person ages, the the expansion of uh, you know openness um, increases. We also see that by the the way the lifeline swings upwards, um, you know, towards Luna, away from the Mount of Venus, increasing the size, the capacity of the Mount of Venus, increasing the ability to uh, love, to accept, to embrace, and um, increases their ability to sort of bring their character outwards, their, their opening up, their persona is, that they're becoming more at ease, they're coming out of their shell as they age almost. And I always find that people with these kinds of fingertips, you know, on all the fingers, are very intelligent. There's a real thirst for knowledge. And again, intelligence is, there's several signs, there's several ways to see that in the palm. And I see it often in a long mercury finger, which we certainly see here. And I'm not judging the length of the mercury finger by, um, you know, comparing it with a lot of palmists say, if it, you know, if your mercury finger reaches above, the first tip of Apollo, then you have a long Mercury. That's not necessarily true because you have to offset the overall length against the first two, uh, the first bottom, the second and third phalanges of Apollo. And that's how you really determine whether or not a Mercury finger is long because sometimes the Mercury finger itself can be very low set and provide an appearance of a short Mercury. And, and it's so it's very misleading. Um, and we certainly have, I don't even have to measure, we have a long mercury thing we have a long headline as well a vastly long headline and and these two in conjunction show us you know the obvious sign of intelligence as well but then with also this added um you know very sort of rounded well-developed fingertips we also see this as well
Notice how as well that the tip of Mercury, the first phalanx here, is actually longer than the other two. And that's kind of rare as well. And it shows, again, a thirst for knowledge. It shows a, a great love of science, a great love of the, uh, the art of study in itself. What it also shows is a great capacity of um, uh, an ability to articulate eloquence. It shows great verbal expression. Uh, someone who's very able to the point of uh, views across and normally I see this in conjunction with uh, the tip of Jupiter being quite sort of thin or pointed um, and, and, that, and that shows someone who's a good explainer I don't see that here which is interesting this isn't someone who's necessarily a teacher and I thought I would see these signs I thought I'd see a teacher square a pointed index finger as well as a long Mercury, but I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing is someone who is leading by example. This is certainly someone who is into reading, and generally with uh, primary palms, um, sensual palms, you see quite a high set thumb, and uh, I don't really see that here. I see actually quite um, low to middling in terms of where the thumb is set on the palm and that again that shows two things it's two possible signs of a clover and a sign of a humanitarian and also the sign of a humanitarian is you know quite understandably being in the heart line and just how far reaching the curvature the depth of it as well as how low down it, we see it as well and, and i don't necessarily see someone here who's um willing to um this is certainly not someone who's going to fall for a sob story but this is certainly someone who has high idealism um their heart line it rises it, it, it reaches past saturn right into jupiter itself this is someone who is acknowledging um uh, judgment uh, and, and what that truly means they are likely highly sentimental and uh, they they probably place quite a lot of expectancy in uh, their self, in their what they're capable of. Now, I, as, as soon as I say that, I'm kind of my thought process goes to the length of the Jupiter finger because, and this is probably not a true depiction here because of the way the hand is slightly relaxed uh, in terms of you know length. So I'm not going to take it into consideration too much. Um, but when we see and and we saw this in Gandhi's palm um a very short jupiter finger a, 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 you know a kind of an all-encompassing understanding of their place in the world and how small they are within the universe they have a great understanding of their their own worth in the world in the universe and and i don't quite see that here actually i see a lot more um self-important self, self uh, a, a greater ego here and that's not necessarily a bad thing our ego is what allows us to fight for what we believe in and uh, stick up for ourselves and those we love ego is important it's there for a reason too much you know anything in moderation but what we do see here is uh, jupiter and apollo the length of both are equal and this is important because it shows us that our abilities to um check in with ourselves really um to truly understand what we are capable of and and how our our ideas of what we are capable of are in line with our abilities so it's one of the signs of fame in palmistry because it it, it provides a very sort of measured approach to a person's self sense of self and what they're capable of achieving this person certainly does not have an inferiority complex as gandhi does and you can check out his palm reading i've read his palm on this channel as well this person has a, a very measured a very self-aligned um understanding so a, a great self a sense of self-understanding what i also see here is the you know it's kind of a stout third uh phalanx of mercury and it's kind of you know thick uh and this is again that kind of aspect of a sensual palm and this this particular aspect here it shows us um a very sort of shrewd business sense someone not necessarily but someone who is very capable or very good in business very capable of making money 
However, uh, one sign alone is never usually enough to conclude. In palmistry, I always advise looking, you know, connecting the dots before creating an accurate conclusion. Now, notice the headline. The headline is always where you can get an idea as to where someone's thinking about money. Because notice how it, it I'm, I'm not going to say plunge into Luna, but it, it takes a sharp, uh, overall consistent curve into a very well-developed imagination. This is someone who's highly creative. This is someone who is um, very in um, connection. There's a strong connection with their their dreams, their their thoughts, their feelings, their subconscious, um, their imagination. They're highly creative, and it's not someone who's thinking in terms of you know very practical means i've said that this is a mixture of practical and analytical palm but actually this other aspect of the headline here it completely contradicts these things which is why we have a very mixed person a very unique person this is not someone who's thinking in terms of of, of money of finances of materials their their way of thinking is much more um introspective so although they might be a good business person, um, they, this is not one of the skills that they are um, exacting. Now, in palmistry, some people think that um, certain fingers are more important than others. I'm not so sure about that. I don't like that. Um, I think they all have their place, and I think that they are some fingers are more important to certain people depending on the person that's that's probably where as, as far as i'm willing to go with it but notice the jupiter finger a lot of palmers say that this is the most important finger because it's the self and we're analyzing that person so i can understand that theory although i don't completely agree with it but what i find interesting about this jupiter finger is that all the phalanges appear to be in uh, complete alignment in complete um that there's an equal distance between each three it seems they're they're very balanced this person's um awareness of their self uh that the their idea of their self is is balanced it's aligned it's uh it's strong it's not it's not overbearing there, there's no superiority complex here um and in you know it's straight it's thick enough not too thick it's not too overpowering it's not too dominant it's, it's just it's just right i mean there are it's not perfect no one person is perfect and i'm sure he would be willing to admit this what i do see here and this is interesting is that the fingers themselves notice how they kind of taper in at the uh, first phalanx, just in between the first and the second here, the first knot, if you will, of the fingers. They taper in, you can see it especially there on Apollo, Saturn there a little bit, Jupiter as well. Um, you can give or take really with Mercury, but this is a sign of someone who's had many brothers and sisters. And likely there's a feeling here, and we see that in the left hand, because the left hand is what's introverted, it's what's, um, you know, inside, internal, of... Um, abandonment when young by the parents there's a feeling of neglect that they were somehow um that there wasn't enough uh time um that their needs weren't met as a child and like it's a sign of often i see it in um eastern people's palms it's a sign of potential um you know losing out on childhood when a person has a lot of brothers and sisters they have to um, grow up quickly and start looking after their brothers and sisters at a young age and cooking and cleaning and, and they kind of lose childhood and that is what I think has happened with this person here I think in some ways they lost quite a big um, part of their childhood likely because of the way they were raised the thumb itself is interesting because although it's not all that high set it still reaches up to half the halfway mark of the third phalanx of jupiter and this is always a sign of a deep thinker someone who is and again coincides with what the headline is showing us you know constantly thinking i see this sort of um you know long uh curvature headline and long thumb in the hands of blind people 
And this is because when you're cut off from that one sense, you are almost sort of forced into a different way of thinking, forced into looking back into the past, thinking about your dreams. Um, you know, you think ab about your other senses more. You're kind of, you, you're pushed into a different way of thinking, yeah, less material, less um, what is physically seen, you know, less physical. You're, you're, you're thinking in more terms of the unseen. And so I, I get a real sense of that with this person as well. Well, then, that's enough about the shape of the hands and fingers. I'm going to move on into the chirology aspect, the uh, digging into the aspects of the lines in the palms and, and what this can show us. And, and I'm going to try and start here at the beginning of this person's life. As much as I can, there's a lot of shadowing going on here, but I'm not going to complain. This is a great image. We see here that at the age of around about 10 or so, we've got here some massive advancements in learning, in academia, in writing in speech, language, um, either sort of mathematical or, you know, this is highly academic. Um, and we see it pointing towards Saturn, this place of duty and honor and um, and how we kind of hold ourselves upright in society. Uh, and often we see this because like the fate line, like our career line, as it's sometimes called, it rises up towards Saturn, the inevitable timing, um, planning, duty, as I say, it rises up towards the same place, indicating um, support in this person's life path. This is, uh, in, for all intents and purposes, this is an improvement or effort line, but it's rising to where it rises towards gives us an indication as to what this means. Now, I find it really interesting, and I see this quite often, actually, when we see another rising line that rises up towards Jupiter towards you know a very a much more sort of a place of introspection this is a, you know a much more sort of idealistic place a place of ambition this is an ambition line actually that's what this is as well really it's a it's, it's an ambition line is a line that rises up from the lifeline onto the Jupiter mount itself and that's what this is as well but the direction of it is Saturn, so it's, it's providing us with a bit more um, clarity around what that means. Now, this secondary ambition line, it's, it's, it's one in its truest form because it, it, it carries on onto the Mount of Luna itself and it forms a triangle with this uh, achievement of academia. So this is, uh, we're looking at the right hand here, so this is what's physical, practical, external. This is a need to um, rise physically from outside of their environment. It's the lifeline, conjoined with the headline at this time, because this person hasn't yet, at this point in time, carved their own independence for themselves. So the combination of creating this triangle is through this academic achievement, this accomplishment, and through this uh, physical moving outside of their environment that they're creating a triangle on their life and headline. And this triangle is always fortunate. So it's the combination of these two events in their life. And the secondary event of this you know, ru need to rise out of this situation is at the age of 23. And so there was a, a need here to physically move. And it's quite a profound one, and it's had an effect here. And, and if it wasn't for this academia, uh, it, it wouldn't have been as fortunate, if you like, because otherwise it wouldn't have created the triangle. And we can see the desperate need here because, actually, we can see a bit of a disturbance in, you know, as a, in the form of an island, in and on the head and heart, um, the head and lifeline as well. And coming from that, we see another little rising line here. I'll stop myself from saying rising because, it's, you know, it's almost horizontal, which shows an obstacle. But it's moving towards Apollo. And Apollo is a place of joy, success, happiness, achievements, talents, and, uh, and what makes us happy, what makes others happy. And this person is all about happiness. I have to say, there are signs and signs again about happiness in this person's palm. And, and I suspect that the uh, hurdles this person's had in their career is largely in and around their ability to seek happiness and their ability to allow others to seek that happiness as well, because they can certainly a person who gains real enjoyment 
from enabling others to find their happiness. And it's interesting because there's another rising line here, Jupiter, an ambition line rising, actually coming from the same area here. So there's there's a physical need to um, improve their own sense of self in some way, to improve their own uh, idea of who they are in the world. And then literally, physically, a, a need to get out of the situation. Now, this need to improve themselves is probably this, whereas this is more, this is an ambition line, but it's more physical. It's closer to Saturn. It's closer to the career. It's more practical. Uh, and it rises higher. So it's showing here that this, this physical, literal move uh, has had a vast impact on their life as a whole. We see another one here, not quite so impactful, but another one all the same at around about the age of 25, 26 or so. And I almost failed to neglect. Check out the Mars line here. It is rising into the lifeline. Now, all things sort of seem to happen at once here for this person now, at, the, at this age of 22 or 3 or so. Because we have this Mars here, this Mars line is, is supporting us in some sort of conflict, some sort of challenge, helps us uh, break, uh, mend broken bones. It helps us fight legal battles and literal physical wars. The Mars line is Mars is the god of war. And it shows um, this need to uh, strive to, to fight through this conflict at this time. It, it shows a very real, possible, physical uh, conflict and a need to rise out of this conflict it's fascinating and at the same time we have this breaking away this this carving their own dependence and it's all, almost like as though they made the decision themselves there may have been advisors around them saying this is what you need to do um, and they may well have gone against that they carved their own independence at the time of uh, them moving almost outside of this and their mars line the inner Mars line here has really sort of supported in that there's real motivation, drive here to uh, um, to carry out this ambition. And I can't help but feel, you know, the way the headline here, it, it almost becomes vertical towards its end. And it's sort of almost parallel with um, the, the fate line and the fate line's origins. It almost feels as though this person thinks in a way... They cert I feel that they certainly feel that they are fated, that their destiny, that they have a destiny in the first place, that they believe in destiny, that they have no control over their destiny. That's how this person feels. There seems to be a feeling that there is almost no point in making decisions because these things were always going to happen anyway. And you can see here that at, I'm going to try and be a bit more consistent here and, and actually re-digress. At the age of 35 here, there seems to be a tremendous effort again. This is actually classically an effort line. It comes from the lifeline itself, and it's an upward rising line. It's an effort line, sometimes referred to as an improvement line. Someone's making an improvement, uh, um, making uh, self-positive change. And this reflects on their career, certainly. It's, it's pointing towards their career, uh, Saturn. And it is... There, there's something that's occurred here at the age of around about 35 that really strengthened their career. And it was a very difficult time as well because there's two paths here. So there's there's a, a double meaning to their purpose in life at this time. There's Their attention is divided almost. It's a, it's a bit of a struggle for some time up to the age of about 39. This person really struggled in their career to um, to carry out their goal. There are great efforts made in order to ensure that this happens. And what's interesting is the fate line early on in life, and I'm going back a bit here, we can see it rising upwards towards the lifeline. There's branches here from the fate line reaching towards the lifeline. There's a need here to reach back to community, to reach back to family, to, to, to connections, to advisors, to, um, to help uh, strengthen and influence and, and understand and, and progress and these these influences you know these branches coming from uh, the fate line are all very healthy and, and i say i use the word branches because it's literally like 
are plants. You know, you've got some foliage down here. We've got a leaf up here. Yes, this, this might be a struggle. It might be a weight, a burden on the overall stalk of the plant. That one leaf up here might be sort of um, swaying the, the plant in the wind. It might be heavy for it. But at the same time, this struggle up here, and I'm going to get around to explaining what this means properly, I think what it means, is enabling it to uh, receive experiences in, in sense of sort of photosynthesis, if you like. But when we go through str struggles, conflict, challenge, it's, it's only through that that we can grow. I surprise myself with these analogies sometimes, and I don't know where it comes from, but no, I just literally made that up on the spot. But I, I, I'm going to stick by that. Uh, I'm quite proud of myself. But this is, you know, just looking at it now, and I've only just realized this fate line, it actually really does look like a plant in itself. It's quite something, isn't it? And it shows us this person's path in life and the growth of it. And there's a need here for lower sort of foliage to strengthen and um, act as a rudder almost. These these past influences, these these connections here, this networking, the advice that they received uh, around their environment, their life uh, living, you know, it's connected to the lifeline. It shows us how this person has managed to navigate through later on in life. Without this, we wouldn't have the stability to uh, manage this later on. And the same can certainly be said for this, although this section of this plant, if you like, if that's what and I think that's what I'm going to stick with now, is not as strong. It's not as stable. And this is why I say, you know, this was a difficult time for this person. This was probably in this person's career, 35 to 39 ish is at their most um, sensitive, not the right word. They were at their most vulnerable period throughout this time in their in their I'm not going to say career, because they're that's not really the right word to use. This person has a very unique career. It's their life journey, their path in life. Um, at this particular part in the stalk of their plant. And what is a person's path in life without success? Now, notice the success line here. And I find this, this is just tremendous. We have it actually coming from low down. Uh, it comes from the lifeline itself, which uh, shows actually um, normally when I see this, is, this is extremely rare. First of all, I'm not used to encountering success lines as long as this. This would represent a child protege. That's what this represents. You don't see this sort of thing very often because you don't see child protégés very often. You don't meet geniuses very often or people that have such profound effects on other people's lives very often. You know, these types of influential people just aren't around everywhere. And actually, another sign of highly um, influential people is the headline itself, a long and far-reaching headline. And this one actually branches off here, providing extra perspective. It's a sign of someone who affects the lives of many. And this is certainly someone who wishes to do that in the most positive of ways. And we see that by these um, multiple success lines here as well, rising up from upper lunar, connected with these good Samaritan lines. This person's success is directly linked towards helping other people. And that, for me, is a clear cut sign of a good Samaritan. But notice the success line here. It comes from the lifeline. It's literally, it's not without their uh, their life as a whole and what they've been through that they wouldn't, you know, they couldn't have the success without their experiences. So that's one. They couldn't have the success without their uh, connections, without the advice from those around them in their in their domestic sphere. They wouldn't have the success if it weren't for their ability to think, feel, and their overall life path. It crosses all of these things. I mean, I suppose that goes without saying, really. But what is interesting is it crosses them. And in a way, it's sort of crossing lines like this aren't good because it's showing us that they're the obstacle. It's showing, it's showing conflict. It's showing it clashing. Uh, uh, and, and I think this person has a strange relationship with their idea of, of success. 
I think that's what's happening here. I think we have someone here who in some way shuns success. They don't like the idea of money. Money, is, as I say, is not important to this person. If it were, we'd see a rising branch from the headline reaching up towards outer Mars. We don't see that. Well, instead, what we see are success signs coming from uh, high up on Luna, um, the headline reaching down into Luna. Everything about this person is showing us that material gain is is not is is they they they're not they they don't want that. People likely in some way try to uh, um, provide them with materials, and they um, in some way they reject these things. I noticed that the success line takes a strange course in itself, as does the fate line as well. It sort of mirrors this course as a waving in the wind. It's almost as though this person is, um, again, this coincides with the feeling that they are fated, that they are just sort of taking it as it comes and adjusting in the moment. Now, I've had a bit of a thought process. In terms of adjusting in the moment, what I'd really like to see here, I don't quite have the clarity, unfortunately, are the fingertips themselves i mean i suppose i'm asking for a bit much really now the loyalty line here is tremendous and what i notice about the loyalty line is that it doesn't reach further than the lifeline itself it touches the lifeline this person has a strong uh, desire to be loyal to um their people and their their role in life is certainly connected with that now, notice at the age of 53, the success line, it can be read alongside the fate line. It takes a strong sort of curve away from joy and happiness and more towards the career. There's an emphasis here uh, on working more alongside others. And this is certainly someone who, you know, notice how Apollo and Saturn lean towards, closely towards each other. All the fingers, in fact, Kind of lean slightly inwards there's no one finger that's sort of saying you know i'm the boss if you like i i'm the one that's um you know towing the line um jupiter i'd say is the one that doing that the most of all but it's still also leaning inwards as well now these two leaning inwards towards each other is always a sign of someone who's very considerate who's always thinking about others and that's already seen here as well that by the strength of these good samaritan lines but also at the same time, we have at 53, the career line, it you know, creates this leaf on their plant of their path in life. And there's, there's a great struggle here. The, their ability to be happy bows under the pressure at this time. And it isn't until around about the age of 70 or so, it was a, you know, a good 20 years of tremendous struggle and although their own um or, although they they might not feel as successful uh, about their achievements that you know getting through this struggle they do get through it they do come out stronger on the other side in in some sense it, it becomes easier at least they are not as happy after this time there's a bit of interference here after this time after the age of 70 they're not as happy there's not as much fulfillment this person really needs to feel as though they're making positive impact to the lives of many. Otherwise, they're not doing their, their job, which is, um, that's a, those are some big boots to fill. It, it's almost as though there's a bit of prevention here from this person achieving their goals later on, much later on in life. This person, you know, I mean, I'm talking 80s, late 80s. There's some sort of prevention here, it sort of looks like, but it's hard to know um exactly because i don't know when this image was taken and and that really uh, reflects strongly on the possibility of accuracy in terms of looking uh, at the future ahead so you know if this is 20 years old well we'll be looking at a very different hand in this day and age now then i'm going to leave you with one last little thing i've just noticed and i've done a little bit of digging as i pause this and you notice the square here on venus it's it's isolated it's found a deep enough marking to to really have some significance so i've looked at this and notice the little line that comes from here and it reaches up towards the lifeline at the age of 24 25 
This is Exile. Uh, a square on the Venus Mount is possible imprisonment. And you've often heard me say, if you've watched any of my other videos, that a square on the inside of the lifeline is isolation from society. Well, so too is this, but it's a bit different. It's a, a feeling, I suppose. Um, it's more domesticated. You're probably more likely to see this on the hands of... Um, domestic abuse victims who are emotionally controlled and not allowed to leave the house. Um, the square on, on the Venus Mount here shows it, it, exile. That's what this represents here for this person at the age of around about mid-twenties here. I find this absolutely fascinating. And um, again, another sign here that I don't see all that often. You know, we have here a low, a low uh, beginning success line rising it curves we've got multiple success lines um we've got this you know the success here of uh, other people's happiness impacting this person's own possibility for happiness um we've got their their, their own perception of how they're perceived by others potentially uh, affecting this person's ability to uh, feel you know successful it's tremendous we've got a, a strong doubling of of the success lines as well there's just so much about this person's hand that shows us uh, brilliance and also we have an incredibly and i've almost forgotten to mention this entirely an incredibly low lying fate line which is it's right down into pluto a place of ancestral memories uh, and so that's a sign in tibetan palmistry quite fitting of uh, someone who has reincarnated with a purpose from a past life so a fascinating hand altogether you know incredible hand i'm really excited to have presented this palm in this week's case study and um i'm also really excited to announce that this is my 51st palm reading next week will be um, a full year of sunday case studies so let me know what your suggestions are for my um anniversary sunday case study there we go and uh, i'm going to consider i've got a few ideas in mind myself um perhaps i should have left this one for because it's a great one so yeah let me know what your thoughts are on who i should read for the anniversary and thanks for watching as always please like subscribe please comment and i will see you on the next one